life is short. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. God is calling your heart home. He's calling you home right now. The Bible says that no one comes to the Father except the Spirit of God pulls you near. The Holy Spirit is among us. The precious Spirit of God is in this room right now. said my spirit will not always strive with man there's a scripture that is that has always boggled my mind it says of Esau Esau sought for repentance and found none it means he reached a point where he said okay I'm ready to get saved now I'm ready to give everything up for Jesus now I'm ready to take up my cross come on I'm ready the Bible said he sought for it but he found none the Bible said every sin will be forgiven, but the sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. You can quench the Holy Spirit. The Bible said quench not my spirit. You know how you quench a thirst? You give water to it. You know how you quench the Holy Spirit? You simply don't fuel and feed anything spiritual into your life. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, the word grieve has to do with, with funerals, which tells me you can't grieve over something you don't love. So if the Holy Spirit grieves over you, you can tell me somebody died that lives across the world, and I'll, I'll, I'll have compassion. I'll say, I'm sorry to hear that, but I don't grieve over somebody I don't care or know. But when it says the Holy Spirit grieves, it means He loves you like a mother, like a brother, like a father. He grieves. You keep telling it no, no, no. You can resist the Holy Spirit. You can actually mess with it. But God told me to tell you, before you leave this conference, and on your road back, if you're on the broad road, you'll have to go down that road by climbing over the Holy Spirit and ultimately over the cross. The biggest roadblock Jesus has ever set up in your life is the cross. You've got to climb high to get over it. I'm through, but I want you to hear this. There are 27 books in the New Testament. 27 books. And in those 27 chapters, there are 364 times when the Bible warns about judgment or hell. Imagine 27 books and 364 signs about judgment or hell. Imagine a road that's 27 miles long. And on that road that's 27 miles long, there's 364 warning signs flashing. Not, not 50, not 20. How many of you would get in a car and ride down a 27-mile road and ride through 364 flashing lights saying, turn around, road out, bridge out, danger, wrong direction, one way. You're going, turn around, turn around, danger ahead. 27 miles, 364 warning signs. And yet some of you who wouldn't do that in a car are doing it with your eternal soul. You have become a professional rejecter and you know how to play God games. You know how to raise your hands in worship service and pretend to be a Christian and with those same hands go up under a girl's bra on Friday night and go to church and raise your hands on Sunday and worship God. I'm here tonight to warn somebody. I know you don't hear this kind of preaching anymore, and I know we're supposed to be up and positive all the time, but I still believe I'm not afraid of a negative. I'm not afraid to tell you that there's some there's a cost to the cross, that there's some stuff you got to lay down. Now, when, when I decided I was through with the devil, I got rid of all that music. I burned it. I said, I 
through with it. I got rid of all those people that kept pulling me down. I got out of every relationship that wasn't of Jesus. All you got to do is make up your mind. And Jesus says, I'll come and give you the power to do what you can't do on your own. Give him a big shout of praise right now. Oh, come on. Give him a shout of praise right now. I want you to stand to your feet. No one moving. No one going in or out. Every head bowed and every eye closed. The Holy Spirit is in this room. He's tugging on your heart. He's drawing you. He's put his finger on some things in your life. Some of you need to make him Lord of every relationship. You need to make him Lord of your thought life. You need to get him, make him Lord of your eyes. Lord of your body. Lord of your mind. And Lord of your future. I believe God had us preach this message tonight so that you would turn around. Get off that broad road. Get on that narrow road. See, because it's not just about you. Some of you have got little brothers and sisters that are coming up. And if you don't change directions, you're going to lead them right down the same road you're going. you got friends. The Bible said you don't live to yourself. You don't die to yourself. Which means you're influencing somebody right now, good or evil. And God has put the roadblocks up. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to humiliate you. I'm going to pray for you. If you're in this room tonight, I don't care if you're at the top, or if you're on the main floor, if you're on the front row. If you would say to me, Pastor Franklin, I know I'm not living right. Jensen, I know. I know that I'm playing God games. I know I'm the one. I've said in service after service. I've ran over my conscience. I've ran over my mother's prayers. I've ran over things. Everything just about you preached on has happened. And I feel the Holy Spirit. Tonight is my night. If that's you, I don't want you to hesitate. I don't want you to negotiate with God or the devil or yourself. I want you to be born. He hung publicly on the cross for you. And if this message is for you and you know you need to get right, I want you to slip your hand up just as high as you can get it right now all over this building. They're up all over this building. Some of you have never responded to an altar call. Some of you don't even know why you came on this trip. Some of you don't even know why you're in this building. I know why. God put a warning sign. Out of love, out of mercy, he's tried to turn you around tonight. This is your night. As they bring the lights up, I want every person who has raised your hand, every person who has raised your hand to get out of your seat. I don't care if you're all the way up in the top. Get out of your seat. Be bold now. Be bold now. We didn't come out here just to have a good time. We came out here to get real and serious before God. And if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, get out of that seat and come stand right down here. They're coming. Let's give them a big hand. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amy, Bill, I want someone to come. I want you to get a, the worship song that you played first. Ready? Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. You need to do it. Your pride will make you stand there. Your pride will say the other kids, the other kids are looking at me. They're expecting me to. Forget the other kids and move for Jesus tonight. Something breaks when you obey the Holy Spirit. Something breaks when you say yes to Him and no to your flesh. Something breaks. Something breaks. Come on. Come on. Somebody else needs to come. Come on. Come on. There's room over here. Get them, get them down that aisle. Get them in. I want you to bring the lights up in this house. I want every teenager that knows you're saved, but you want to be a roadblock in the life of the youth and, and the kids and your friends and your family. Raise up both hands toward heaven if you would. I want you to call on the Lord right now. I want you to call on Him. I want you to call on Him right now. I want you to pray. I want you to keep coming if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. I want someone to bring the house lights up right now. I want you I want you to come right now. See, I know you can't get all the way down here, but I believe that if you move in obedience and make any attempt to get close to the Lord, it's like a magnet that draws God's power to you. There's a humbling factor in walking down an aisle. Come down. Sing it. Raise your hands up. 
Tell him I belong to you, Jesus. You're the reason that I live. The reason that I sing. Sing it, everybody. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I know. God, let, let us all be able to stand. We don't, we don't have to have the sorrows of life to wake us up. This is our wake-up call. This comfort is what's going to set our whole youth group on fire for the glory of God. We don't just need one or two in the youth group to get on fire. We need everybody in the youth group to begin to pray, to begin to clean the life up, to begin to be real and bold and not ashamed of Jesus. Those of you who have your hands raised, say this out loud. Say this out loud. Jesus, I come to you tonight. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. I want you to wash me in your blood. I'm going to turn my life around. And I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Say that. I'm coming after you. I surrender everything to you. I hold nothing back. I surrender all tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Say this, I am forgiven. I am saved. My conscience and the past cannot haunt me anymore. It's under the blood. Yes, I messed up. Yes, I failed. But it's under the blood. Starting this night, starting this day, I'm a new creation. It's over. The past is the past. And I can't do anything about it, but I can do something about the future. I will live for Jesus. Somebody give Him a big shout of praise. Hallelujah.